Good evening, YouTube. How you doing? Happy New Year's Eve. Some of you, it's already New Year's Day, depending on where you're watching from. Um, it's about 5.30 on the west coast of the U.S. I, Ender 2 update. I wanted to give you a quick Ender 2 update. I planned to do an unboxing video, and as I took a quick look at it and saw how many little teeny parts were there and frankly realized that I didn't know what the hell I was doing and it didn't make a ton of sense for me to do a video trying to you watching me struggle I didn't end up struggling that bad uh, there were a few things that needed to be dealt with um, there were a few tweaks there were a few things that I'll list some parts but I'll show you uh, that's a different z-stop that Z-stop is not necessary, but it has a larger level of adjustment in it compared to the one that came from the factory. So it's recommended. This filament guide that keeps the filament away from rubbing on the screw, the greasy screw, as well as gives you a place to put your wires. This Z screw holder with a 608 bearing at the top. For some reason, they just leave that screw flopping around from the factory which I don't get and I don't like, but it is what it is. Um, so I printed that part. The other one, the one that was one of the more important, is this Y-stop mount down here. If you look at how far the end stop is past the edge of the rail, you'll see why it's necessary. If you had a regular stop, which the one they give you is a rectangle, and you screw it into the rail, it moves the end stop about 25 millimeters closer and you don't get the full Y. On this on the bed uh, after I put that in I'm getting probably five millimeters over the other thing I did is there's these spring cups so I put spring cups on all three springs top and bottom and then both of the front bed knobs have larger knobs to make it easier the back one is really hard I printed two different designs and both of them interfere with the Y stop However, I did not go back and try it again after I put the new Y-stop on. So it may be that I'm okay now and can go back to it, which I'll do that later. Uh, all in all, not a bad install. Hour and a half, maybe. Something in that range. This is the first print right here. I'm printing via USB because I don't have a Pi for it yet. Uh, I think the power supply is kind of cheesy. That's kind of a cheesy solution. Uh, they couldn't have integrated some kind of stand under the acrylic underneath and basically lift the thing up on top of the power squat. Make it a little bit taller, but a single piece. That's what they should have done. Uh, as far as additional mods coming for it, I'm printing a whole new control box here that tilts the LCD up towards you, as well as the button, and it has an integrated Raspberry Pi mount in it. So that's how I'll use OctoPi to control that. So that's actually, part of that's printing right now on the Tornado. There it is, that's the bottom. There's a lot of uh, supports. So the bulk of what you see here, this is all support that'll be coming away. But that's the bottom of the case that uh, replaces that other, has this piece at the top of it at an angle like so, with the LCD and the uh, knob in it. Now, I printed this on the mono price, which the mono price is working. I'll show you in a second, but does anyone know what this is? What causes this? Right here. It was printed this way. If you look at the inside of it, it doesn't look too bad. Although I'd like to know what, why there's drag marks everywhere and how I avoid all the drag marks everywhere. But, so it was printed like this. Both sides came up. The inside of both of those overhangs look pretty nice. The outside of both of them look horrible. Anyone know what that is? Uh, shoot me a message in the comments if you know. And here we go. Last but not least, the Monoprice Maker Ultimate. And I don't know what he's printing. He's printing a sample model off of the SD card that came with him. Uh, primarily because I goofed up and I'm printing with Cura 
via USB on the other one, and I don't see it. It looks like I'll interrupt it if I try to go back. Maybe I'm wrong, and I can print to multiple printers via multiple USB ports as long as each one's on its own comm. Not sure. Uh, didn't want to screw it up and test it, so for now, I just wanted. I grabbed one of the uh, G-code files that was for this Ultimate and just uploaded it through OctoPrint, and I'm printing it. It's a little, little short print. I want to see what the quality looks like primarily is what the goal is. Um, I did put a new cooler. You see the r new red cooler. It's a ring-style cooler. It's printed in PLA, not ABS, but I have no, no drooping or any issues there. I, that's the Micro Swiss all metal hot end, so there's no Teflon tube in it anymore. Uh, the intention will be this will be my high temperature printer. I'm thinking this is I'll get the enclosure for this one, and I'll use this printer for uh, ABS, PET G, etc. Possibly even other filaments as I experiment down the road. So. That's kind of the intention with that printer and why I didn't have a problem with a plug nozzle go ahead and buy an all-metal hot end. Because I kind of see that as my hot printer, if you will, anyway. So, that's it. That's our New Year's Eve update. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I will have a listing of all of the things that I've showed, at least that I've called out. Not necessarily everyone that's on film, but... Everyone that I've called out, I'll have a listing of each one of those things underneath the video. Everybody be safe, have a good one, and hope you all have a great new year. Thanks a lot.